Romans chapter 7 speaks about a person who's got into this desire for victory over sin and to live a holy life, but who misunderstands how to live it. He gets married. The picture is used as a year is of marriage. He's married. Instead of being married to Christ, he gets married to the law. And Romans chapter 7 is basically, in the first part anyway, speaking about being delivered from the law. Now what does this mean in practical terms? In Romans 6, we saw about being married to the old man. Now it speaks about being married to the law. And Romans 7, 4 says you were made to die to the law through the body of Christ, that you might be married to another, him who is raised from the dead. So we can say here in Romans 6 and 7, we see three marriages. A marriage to the old man, a marriage to the law, and a marriage to Christ. There's a lot of difference. The old man is like a wicked husband who beats me and hammers me and uh, turns me into a prostitute and uh, destroys my life. And here is a wife who is battered and hammered by this wicked husband, longing for deliverance, and one day... Her husband dies. The old man is dead. Praise the Lord. He's born again. And now, this believer is now can, is free to marry. But instead of marrying Christ, he makes a mistake and marries someone who looks like Christ. <laughs> the law. The law is perfect. And it's very easy to mistake the law for Christ because it demands righteousness. The law is not like the old man husband. He doesn't hammer you or beat you or do anything to trouble you. But the law demands perfect. You must get up promptly at six o'clock. You must cook the breakfast and have it ready on the table by eight o'clock. Not eight zero one, eight o'clock. That's the law. Every part of the room must be absolutely, of the house must be absolutely tidy. <clears throat> the shoes must be in the proper place. The clothes must be washed without any stain and ironed and kept. And the house must be spick and span. He never asks for anything evil. Now, how many of you sisters would be like to marry such a man who demands perfection in every area? You'll say, boy, this is like getting out of the frying pan into the fire. And uh, he's a good man, but he's so demanding. He never asks for anything evil. But I can never measure up to his standards. And then you realize you married the wrong man. So what to do? And this husband, this law, never dies. He's so healthy. He, he doesn't have any blood pressure, diabetes, nothing. He's healthy and strong. He'll live forever because it's the law of God. So you give up all hope. I'm married to this man. And it says if the married man, verse 7, verse 2, is bound by law to her husband as long as he's alive. And he's going to live forever. That's what I think. And that's right. The law of God lives forever. And the woman gives up all hope. Then God does something else. He makes the woman die. That also breaks the marriage. You were made to die, verse 4. First time the old man, the husband died. Now, you, the wife, you were made to die. And your relationship with the law is broken. And now you're raised up from the dead. And you're married. You can be married now to Christ. That is the third marriage, where Christ also is very demanding. He also says, breakfast must be on the table at 8 o'clock, 801, his, not 801. Everything must be spick and span, the house must be clean, because Jesus' standards are not less than the standards of the law. It's more actually. The law said, you shall not commit adultery. I say unto you that you shall not even lust in your heart. His standard is even higher, but there's a difference. 
he says, let's you and I do it together. We'll make breakfast together. Supposing you're one of those lazy wives who can have breakfast ready only by one o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. <laughs> the Lord doesn't throw you out. He says, never mind, we'll work together. And you and the Lord work together and gradually next day breakfast is at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's not bad. Yesterday it was one o'clock, today it's 11 in the afternoon. You're doing better. And the Lord says, wonderful. We have moved from 1 o'clock to 11 o'clock. We'll gradually move towards 8 o'clock. We're going to press on to perfection. And maybe you're the type of person who washes clothes and still all the stains will be there. And the Lord says, never mind, we'll work on it. The next time you wash the clothes, there are just a few stains left. And he said, never mind, we're going to press on to perfection till you wash the clothes and there won't be one stain left in it. Do you see how the Lord works with us? He's not just giving us commands like the law. He works with us. We are co-workers with him. That's the type of husband Jesus is.